This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Evergreen Valley. But before that, this video is brought to you by the 901 Meister and Semper Buffo. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Evergreen Valley map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Evergreen Valley. Evergreen Valley is a fictional place situated in a unique geographic region that offers fascinating mix of economic activities. The North is home of mines to extract a variety of valuable resources, contributing significantly to the region's economy. To the South, the topography smooths out to give way to a vast expanse of fertile land. In this region, agriculture is predominant activity, but Evergreen Valley also stands out as a place where nature harmoniously joins human activity, creating a unique atmosphere that combines the harshness of mining with the beauty of infertility of agricultural lands. This map includes 39 new productions, trains, variety points of sale, 41 purchasable plots of land, 31 fields, collectibles, and much, much more. Now, it is very important to note that in the production, energy is going to be a requirement. And as such, you will need to make sure you get the generators up and running as quick as possible and set the electricity to distribute. Now this map has several required mods. So in addition to the mods that we typically use when we take a look at maps, we're gonna be making use of the American farmhouse, as well as the map itself. Lizard circular pivot irrigation, the Lizard F350 pickup truck, the old time shed pack, the sell everything mod, storage sheds, and the telehandler pallet fork. Now, I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farmer mode. With the exception, you do not own the farming starting machinery. Now, I did put a little caveat there because there is some mining starting machinery that you will have available in all play modes. In addition, I loaded this map up on a low powered mini PC and I was able to get frames well above 60 frames per second. So you should have no problems with respect to performance on low end systems or last gen consoles. Now that we've loaded into the map, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And as the description said, you're gonna find to the north, it's gonna be predominantly occupied by mines. In fact, we have three mines all the way to the very north. We do have some large fields also just on the other side of the river. And we have a secondary sheep farm also to the north of the river. But the predominance of our agriculture is going to be here to the south of the river. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland. We start out by owning farmland ID 1, which includes the starting farm and one field. You can buy that in any alternate game mode for $412,000. As I mentioned, farmland ID 35 is a sheep farm. You can also purchase that for $387,000 thousand dollars this map has all the standard crops available to us in farm sim 22 and if you activate the premium expansion you will have access to red beets carrots and parsnips let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen the farmland lease screen shows, shows all of the viable farmlands how large those farmlands are if those farmlands include any field or fields what is included and lastly how much is that farmland going to cost us we're going to then be able to cross-reference that with the field calculator screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. This map is making use of a custom soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. To the north, we have fields that are predominantly loam, but have a little bit of sandy loam, loamy sand, and silty clay mixed in. To the south, we have less loamy sand, but we still have a nice mix of loam, silty clay, and a little sprinkling of sandy loam mixed around as well now we do have a fairly standard base game crop counter available to us on this particular map and if we take a look down at our prices screen you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops 
that are again once again available to us in farm sim 22 in addition we do have the ability to sell eggs below milk as well as our silage hay straw and grass as we continue down through our base game production items we again do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game production items that are available to us in farm sim 22 in addition we do have the ability to buy and sell lime as well as stones so if we are playing with stones enabled we will be able to get rid of those nasty little buggers now in addition to all the base game productions this map has as the description said 39 new products those products include soybean oil uht milk canned corn canned olives yogurt tomato sauce ketchup pallets carrots are arguable because again we have the premium expansion but without the premium expansion we do have carrots added as well watermelon cabbage soy milk maintenance tools drilling equipment mining equipment petroleum metal part pipes rebar metal beams metal cables vehicle parts gas wooden beams long boards cement concrete blocks trash recyclable materials chocolate cake marble block sawn marble concrete beams concrete slabs concentrated herbicide concentrated liquid fertilizer iron ore dirt sand mineral coal and then we have our premium expansion or sorry our platinum expansion production items and once again we can indeed sell all of our platinum production items as well so overall we are going to be able to literally sell everything that is included in the base game included in the platinum and premium expansions as well as all of the new products that are included on this map in addition if you are playing with pumps and hoses we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure and if you are playing with the straw harvest pack we also do indeed have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets as far as our starting vehicles we do start out with a decent listing of starting equipment given the fact that this is both a mining and a farming map all of it is new none of it is leased we have the sheep barn up to the north i went ahead and purchased that farm if you don't own that farm at the start then you do not have access to the sheep pen but we do not have any animals in that sheep pen either we do have contracts available on this map and we do not start out with any productions now we will be taking a closer look at the productions here in a little bit but do note that you will need to buy those in order obviously to make use of them this map also has 16 custom collectibles and these custom collectibles are basically barrels of gold coins let's go ahead and take a look at that starting fleet and as i mentioned some of this equipment is going to be available in all play modes other equipment is not we'll delineate what equipment is and isn't available in all play modes here in a little bit but in new farm mode we have access to the volvo t425 small tractor the Massey Ferguson 7S210, as well as a 7D810 medium tractor. We have the Anthem 6x4 semi. We have the New Holland CH7.70 harvester. And then that is going to be paired up with the Verify 28 foot grain header, as well as the Nardi N6030 header trailer. We have the old Volvo BM LM845 wheel loader. We have the Lizard. F-350 Crew Cab, the Wilson Pace Setter Semi Trailer, we have the Agrimaz BTC-50H Discaro as well as the Salek TB-100, we have the Lemkin Solitar 12 Seater, the Dalbo Power Roll 1230HD, we also have the Lizard Pivot that is one of the required mods. <laughs> We have the Breedaw K105 fertilizer and lime spreader. For a wheel litter, we have the high dump bucket. We also have the Demco steel drop flatbed trailer. And then we wrap it up with the normal body for the Lizard F350. Now, if we take a look at our mods and DLCs page, you will see that we do have obviously the Lizard circular pivot. 
Blizzard F-350 and the Telehandler Pallet Fork. Those are all part of the required mods, so those are all available here. But we do have some custom items that also are included with the map. We have a Case 721G wheel loader. We have the ability to buy pallets at the shop. We also have the ability to buy large crates of maintenance tools, drilling equipment, as well as mining equipment. We have cases of vehicle parts, pallets of gas, cement, and then we have bottles of concentrated liquid and fertilizer and concentrated herbicide, as well as a bottle of silage additive. Now, I did mention that I was going to tell you what was and wasn't included in all play modes. And basically, what is included in all play modes is going to be your Anthem Semi, your Volvo Wheel Loader and Bucket, your Massey Ferguson Tractor, the Flatbed Demco Trailer, and then around the corner, we, could, we have the Case IH Wheel Loader and Forks. So that is going to be our starting equipment. Let's go ahead at this time and take a closer look at the custom production that is available on this map. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of purchasing all of the production facilities, as well as filling all of the inputs and outputs. Having the outputs filled up is going to be vital to seeing where all the pallets spawn at because, well, on this map, a lot of these productions do not have markers where we can expect the palletized outputs to spawn. So we have the mine and at the mine, we're gonna need maintenance tools, mining equipment, vehicle parts, diesel and electric charge. And in order to then produce iron ore, stones, mineral coal, dirt, and sand. And you're gonna see that a lot of this production is gonna require electrical charge. As we know, we cannot buy electrical charge from anywhere. So we're gonna to have to produce it. So getting electrical charge up and running is going to be key to a lot of the productions on this map. We have the limestone factory, which is again going to require electrical charge, stones, and maintenance tools. This time we're going to produce lime. We have maintenance tools, mining equipment, vehicle parts, diesel, and again, electric charge in order to then produce marble blocks. At our water pumping station, we're going to need maintenance tools and electric charge in order to then get water. We're gonna be able to produce electric charge at our small coal plant, but to do that, we have to have maintenance tools and mineral coal. But remember, we need energy to make mineral coal. We also need mineral coal to make energy, right? That's a vicious circle. We have another way of getting started with our electrical energy, thankfully, without having a requirement that once again also requires electrical energy. At the coal mine, we're gonna need maintenance tools, mining equipment, vehicle parts, and electric charge. And we're also gonna be able to get then more mineral coal, stones, dirt, sand, and iron ore. Now, this one is different from the mine because we're getting substantially more mineral coal from the coal mine than we are from the mine itself. We also have oil extraction, where we're going to need maintenance tools, drilling equipment, electrical charge in order to get petroleum. We have the sawmill, which we're going to require wood in order to get either planks, wood chips, wooden beams, long boards, the recycling center. And this is where we're going to be able to get our electrical charge without having something already that is going to require energy. We're going to need to provide trash, maintenance tools, and wood chips in order to get electrical charge. The bakery is gonna require flour, milk, pallets, gas, and electric charge in order to make bread or, so you see we have two recipes here for bread, one that requires electric charge, one that requires gas. So we can buy the gas and then make our bread without having our electric charge or if we have an abundance of electric energy, we can make it with an electric oven as opposed to a gas oven. Confectionery shop, flour, sugar, milk, eggs, butter, strawberries, pallets, gas, chocolate, and electric charge in order to make cakes. 
chocolate cakes. And again, we have the difference of recipe where we can either use energy or gas in order to do those. At the dairy, we have milk, pallets, electric charge, and sugar. Either produce butter, cheese, chocolate, or UHT milk. We're also going to get trash as an output there. Our gray meal, wheat, pallets, electric charge, and that's going to get us flour. We can also get flour from barley, oats, sorghum, corn, or soybeans. We have a fabric factory where we're going to bring wood, pallets, electric charge, and cotton in order to get fabric and generate trash. We can bring our marble blocks to our marble sawmill where we're then going to be able to saw that up into sawn, sawn, sawn marble. Marble that we've put through a saw. Let's just say that. But we need a marble block, maintenance tools, and electric charge to do that. We're also going to get trash as an output there. Our big coal plant is going to produce more energy than our small coal plant. We're going to again need our mineral coal and maintenance tools to do that. We have a food factory where we're going to be able to bring sunflowers, pallets, electrical charge, canola, olives, soybeans, corn, water, tomatoes, sugars, and grape. And we're going to get out of that sunflower oil, trash, canola oil, olive oil, soybean oil, canned corn, tomato sauce, canned olives, ketchup soy milk, raisins, and grape juice. Down at our metal factory, we're going to need to bring iron ore, lime, electric charge, maintenance tools, and wooden beams. And out of that, we're then going to be able to produce metal pipes, rebar, metal beams, metal cables, and vehicle parts. Our concrete factory is going to require water, cement, dirt, sand, pallets, electrical charge, and rebar. And out of that, we are going to get concrete blocks, trash, concrete slabs, and concrete beams. And then lastly, our BGA, we're going to need to bring fairly standard silage, slurry, manure, and sugar be cut. And we're going to get electrical energy that I do not think is distributed to the rest of our facilities. I think this is just auto sold because we do not have a distribute option here. Methane gas and digestate. With that, let's go ahead and take a look here at our starting farm area. We have our farmhouse. And within the farmhouse, we do have our sleep trigger. Wonderful view of the river right here, back of our farmhouse. Nice storage shed. We have a little ballot, pallet and bale storage that's going to hold 250 ballot, pallets or bales, not ballots, pallets. Jeez. We have our base game silo system here, so we have our dump and fill pipe. We do have a fuel trailer. Inside the barn here, we do have our semi trailer. And we have a lower level, so it's important to come down here to that lower level. And this is where we're going to find our small tractor. And in addition to the small tractor, there is going to be a... Post. And the post... Well, it's supposed to be down here. Let's go ahead and do a little trickery. If we sell the barn, we should expose now this metal beam, our metal post. And if we sell this metal post, other things on this farm will vanish that we typically cannot sell without it. Let's go ahead and get a chainsaw. And as you saw, when we cut that down, then the concrete slabs that bordered this barn and a couple of the other deco items did vanish as a result. And that is pretty much the main starting farm. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of altitude and just take a quick look around. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and talk about our scoring. We are going to be giving the map a full point, obviously, with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for sucks because we have... 
20 custom productions on this map and 39 production outputs that are also custom to this map. So obviously the map is well deserving of that full point. With respect to the ability to sell all Ravasian crops, production items, and animal outputs, once again we are going to be giving the map a full point because we not only have the ability to sell all of the base game items, we have the ability to sell all of the Platinum Expansion production items, as well as the Premium Expansion production items, and most of the 39 new production items as well. With respect to can the farm be customizable, yes, both farms can be completely customizable. So once again, we're going to be giving the map a full point on that metric as well. I think we'll start by making our way to the north and checking out the sheep farm that is directly to the north up here. We'll also check out then the productions to the north and then make our way south of the river and hopefully kind of conclude back to where we all started. So here we have the sheep farm. So we have our red barn. We have our workshop. We have our bale and pallet storage, as well as our sheep area. This is a standard base game sheep area. So we will be obviously able to buy our sheep here. We have the ability to have 100 sheep in this pen. Then we have our food trough and our wool spawn point there as well. Just north of the sheep area and over this ridge, well, this is where we're going to find the coal mine. Go ahead and dive down into here. And in this coal mine, we're also going to find another one of those posts. And this is going to allow us to remove all of these piles of coal that are piled up here. And I will give you a little bit of a hint. If you are a collector, well, it might be beneficial to do that very thing. So here we have the output pipe. This is where we're going to get our product from the coal mine. We've got some nice animations here of this huge, huge digger. The rest of the coal mine is going to be found up here on the upper level. And this is where we're going to bring all of the other inputs that are required for the mine. And we have our interactive trigger at the door there. Then over here we have a, I believe it's a cell point. I'm trying to remember all of these things from my initial overview. Before I started recording and well there's a whole lot going on so this is going to be the small coal plant so the small coal plant is again we're going to be where you're going to bring the mineral coal as well as some other inputs in order to then produce energy so we have our dump point for our part of our products we have our interactive icon and then we have our dump point for our other inputs here and then there's no output here because again it's going to produce energy and you're going to need to go here into your productions again. And anything that is going to produce energy, like the small coal plant or the big coal plant, we're going to want to change that to distributing so that it will auto distribute our electricity across all of the owned productions. So that is also a key. It's going to distribute it evenly across all the productions that you own. So it's important to maybe start out slow with your productions in order to make sure that you do get enough energy to the specific productions that you wish to target. Just beside that, here we have our water pumping station. So we have our output for our water, our interactive icon, and our dump point for our inputs here. We have a cell point, and this particular cell point is kind of hiding 
from an aerial point of view, you're going to have to dump your trailer up underneath of this roof here. You're going to want to bring a low trailer in order to put your products there. And then this is going to be our marble mine. But before we dive into that, I do want to show one more thing. Here we have a train loading point as well as a train renting station. All right, so we can rent a train there with that trigger. We then have the ability here to unload a trailer directly into the train as this graphic is demonstrating. Or you can pull up a truck right next to that, and then unload your product into there. Really cool setup for getting product into the train. Here at our marble mine, we have our spawn point for our marble blocks. And again, these marble blocks will then have to be further processed down at the marble sawmill. We have our interactive icon for that. And we get a little bit of a kind of a demonstration of the overall process of cutting marble here. We're gonna find little kind of informational areas at lots of these custom productions. There we have our dump point. And then if we just continue westward, we're gonna find then our normal mine. We have our dump point for that. Another up point there. And if we continue to then dive in. Stuck on a fence. We have our fill pipe output there. We have our interactive icon and then we have another dump station down here. And below we have our animal dealer. As well as our ability to buy manure and slurry. We have our wool and bale cell point here as well. And I do want to mention that during this flyover and the rest of this video, I am using a joystick that I typically do not use with respect to map tours. So if, if it seems like I'm having a little bit of difficulty in controlling the camera, well, it's pretty much because I am. And well, this car seems to have had difficulty in controlling itself because it has now become part of the building. Just south of that animal dealer, we do have then our sawmill. And don't fear, we're going to go back to our normal setup. This is just a temporary setup so I can get this video recorded with the uh, with the current ocular issues that I'm having. So here we have our wood cell point and wood cell trigger. We have our fill point for our wood chips that are both at the train and a trailer. We have a rent train icon there. And I think we all saw the train fly by. We do have kind of a custom skinned train, it appears. If we continue to follow the train tracks, to the west. We're now going to come upon our petroleum factory. So these are our petroleum tanks. This is our output. So these are our petroleum pallets, if you will. Once again, you can see we do not have a indicator as to where our production outputs are. That is why I went ahead and spawned all of the outputs so we would see those spawn in. We have a rent train trigger there as well. 
And then around the side, we're going to have our fill points and our interactive icon at the front door. Let's make our way across the river. And this is going to be our recycling center. So this is where we're going to get our recycling and trash. Here we have boxes of recycling material. So that is our output. We have our dump station and our interactive icon located right there. And then we have a logistics just general cell point also here at the recycling center location. Coming across the top of town. Got some decorative elements over here. And then we have a hotel, and this is going to be where we have our sleep trigger if we do not own a farm. So if you are simply doing the mining part of this map, you have your sleep trigger located right there. Then on the other side of the hotel, we do have a cell point. Let's jump up here real quick to the map. Make our way around. This is where we are right now. Across the street, we have a buy point for seed, lime, and fertilizer, as well as liquid fertilizer and herbicide. Across the street from that, we have our vehicle shop. Really cool vehicle shop set up here. Then we have our fuel station. Your fuel station here behind or beside the, um, the hotel. And then inside here, we have our vehicle shop. We do have to go inside to get there. And if we come to our dealer, let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra here. You see, when we look inside the shop, we do have custom camera actually inside right where we are standing. So we were looking literally right there. If you need any assistance, there's all the help icons. Dude, you are blocking all the traffic. And then a spawn point is going to be here. Oh my gosh. This is going to be here beside the vehicle shop. And again, that is right where our case wheel loader is also located I think part of my problem is this joystick just I think it moves slower than the the joystick I'm usually used to using for these videos another cell point here in town now this is gonna be our factory our bakery the cell point is in behind it farmers market so I had a little bit of a uh, disorientation so we have our farmers market dump point there we have our dump point for our bakery around the back right, our interactive icon here at the front door and then along the side we have our spawn point for our outputs at the bakery now across the way We then have our production. For our confectionery shop. So our bakery. Not our bakery, our cakery, if you will. So we have our dump point there. We have our spawn point. Again, no indicator icons. And our interactive icon is around front. We also have another cell point here around the back. Moving down the lock, we now have our dairy. We do have spawn points for our dairy here at the back. We have our interactive icon at the front door. 
And then we're going to have our dump station here on the side. Also back here we have pallet storage, which is really cool. We're going to see this at some of our productions where we have the ability to store 250 bales or pallets. I kind of like the idea of having pallet storage where we have productions that are known to produce a lot of pallets. An idea that I had while I saw this earlier before the recording was that we could possibly then also be able to make use of that with possibly having the pallets just go ahead and spawn directly into storage. That's kind of a neat idea. So instead of spawning out here, what if they just spawn directly into storage? That may or may not work. We really haven't seen that done anywhere. Now we have our starting farm located right there. And across the way. Here we have our flour mill. So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point. We have a fill point actually to fill product from here as well. And then we have our pallet spawn point here along the side of the building. And again, more pallet and bale storage that is associated with this production. So I believe it's going to be a cell point alone. Correct the grain elevator. And then we're going to have our BGA. We're also going to have our fabric mill, more storage. Our food factory, industrial cooperative, marble sawmill, and our big coal plant along this side of the river. So we have our BGA, and if you own the BGA, I did try to sell the BGA, and I was only somewhat successful. In fact, what you're looking at here as far as the digesters, they were the only thing that sold. So these structures here, they did not go away. And the silage bunker did not go away, just those. So I would not really suggest trying to sell the biogas plant. This is the sell everything sell point and it has been set up to work both with trailer and train. Then we have our marble sawmill. So have a couple dump points, depending on our inputs, our interactive icon, and then our marble and trash are going to spawn here around the back. This, I believe, was the big coal power plant. We're going to find the dump point for that, located right there. As well as a second dump point. And then our interactive icon is going to be... Well, it's going to be located somewhere around here. Oh, right there at the side of the door, quite frankly. And then, like I said, we're going to find a lot of these areas are going to have kind of informational panels. Kind of just showing us the overall process of how we're going to start with our coal and then ultimately end up with electricity. A little bit of an informational and educational map all at the same time. Here we have our food factory. So we have our dump point. Our pallet spawn point. Spawn point. Our grain cell point there. Then we have our fabric mill, or spinnery, if you will. We have our spawn point there. Our interactive icon and our dump point. And now we'll make our way back across the river.
And over here we have a rent train area. We have our concrete factory. We have our metal factory. We have another bale and pallet storage and another rent train area. And then we're gonna wrap it all up by coming over here to the grain silo. Another rent train trigger. The train is coming, so let's go ahead and see if we can't get a nice and a close look at that train. I'd like to see these custom skins. The FSC, I believe it said. Here we have our dump point. Another dump point. Our interactive icon, and then we have our pallet spawn point located down here at our concrete factory. We have our dump point. Another dump point. We have our interactive point at the door. We have then, this is going to be our spawn point, kind of a crooked spawn point for our metal products. Those are metal rolls of cable. And then again, we have that bale and pallet storage facility there. Now, as we make our way over to the final area with respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Yes, they are. I'm going to be giving the map a full point there as well. And we're going to be taking off a half a point with respect to player interactive areas being clearly marked because of the fact that the outputs of so many of these productions do not have the actual spawn point for those production outputs marked. And I would like to see those marked. Really the only way I could find in order to see those visually easy enough was to go ahead and spawn in product so we can see where it's at. So we have our dump point for our trailer. We have our fill point for our trailer. And then this is just a train grain silo. We're then going to have our dump and fill point there as well for our train. And then we're going to have our rent train trigger also located over here. And that is going to do us for the Evergreen Valley map. I'm going to give this map a score of four and a half out of five. I think it's got some really cool productions set up here. The mining is really, really interesting. How you have to get product out of the mine, the way it produces electrical energy that you then have to distribute is really really interesting and unique and is likely going to offer a little bit of a logistics challenge because you will need to get electric energy up and running at the recycling center in order to then ultimately get enough energy to get your mines up and running initially to then produce electrical energy to then further get your other productions operational. I'd love to hear what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this type of production and really the distance scenery here i just noticed really really nice way off the map we've got a large city kind of shown there really well done map set up and then oh look off on the other side we have mountain ranges so i'd love to know what you all think again of this map down in the comments and until next time happy farming